I made a capture system for Terraria, where the player can tame NPCs and have them fight like minions. This system is inspired by games such as Pokemon and the recent PAL world. In this video, I will be attempting to beat the game with a subclass I made, but here's the twist. The mod isn't finished yet, and I'll be adding new interactions, potentially fixing bugs and discovering the mechanics of the mod as the video progresses. Hopefully you'll enjoy my take on the playthrough, and if you do, please consider showing your appreciation to the video. Thank you. Starting off, my first goal is to make some basic housing, and find 50 silver for the merchant to arrive. This is because he's selling the capture sphere, which is the single most important item in the mod and is used for pretty much everything. I started exploring the spawn cave on the right, found some wooden chest loot which I didn't really need, and a pyramid, which would single-handedly take care of the merchant's money along with a magic carpet. It's now a waiting game. And after some time, the merchant arrived, and of course I was gonna capture that pinky instead of killing it. The capture sphere can be thrown by left clicking, and it won't be consumed, so no need to get a ton of them. Enemies that can be captured have a symbol above their heads. The sphere can be used to deal damage and bring them low enough to be tamed. Hit an enemy under 15% health to capture it. It is possible to switch between capture and release mods by right clicking with the sphere in hand. But at this point, I only wanted to stash a few creatures so I could use them in combat later. What I need now is Flink's Fur, to create a Flink's Fur coat. The subclass is, as you would expect, a summoner subclass. And the damage dealt by the captured NPCs will be increased based on summon damage. Minion slots also increase the maximum number of tamed NPCs, although their damage will be nullified if a normal minion is active for balance reasons. Having found the desert directly east of spawn, I'm going west to try and find the ice biome. This got me to another pyramid, which got me the sandstorm in a bottle. I swear this is a random seed and I did not know any of this. Turns out the underground desert was actually on this side of the map, and the one on the right is only a small biome. I used a freshly captured Antlion Charger to clear out a small room of enemies, and noticed it was invincible. This is the first bug of the playthrough, which I hastily fixed. Starting over, it was night time, and I really feel like Demonize should be tameable. What is the best thing to do with 21 gold? If your answer wasn't buying over 700 bombs, you are objectively wrong. I don't need money in this run, so I might as well use it for something somewhat useful at this point. I went mining in the ice biome on the east side of the map. I'm playing with my two cave enhancing mods, Better Caves and the Orchid Mineshaft for a smoother early game experience. And entering a Better Caves rift, I found a nice cave complex. I started using the couple zombies as bodyguards, and stumbled upon one of the small mineshafts. Zombies get stuck pretty often, but the mod adds a keybind teleporting all your captures to you on a 10 second cooldown. This is super useful when exploring and during boss fights. I found a pair of flurry boots, which combined with the magic carpet and the sandstorm in the bottle gave me absurd mobility. Going back to the mineshaft, I used it as a basis to start grinding for some snowflakes. The large open areas are really good to have a lot of enemies spawn. It turns out that ice bats and spiked ice slimes make for amazing helpers and are really good for capturing new NPCs. It is possible to switch between a combat and a capture formation by using another keybind. While in capture formation, your tamed NPCs cannot crit and will not finish off capturable hostile NPCs so you can capture them easily. Beware though! as your tamed creatures can still take damage from the ones they will spare. With this setup, getting the Flink's Fur was a breeze, and I even got a nice platinum vein which I hand mined because I somehow forgot that I had, you know, 750 bombs. Back home, I bought a chef's hat from the traveling merchant because I'm cooking, blew up my house because my brain is too smooth to use keybinds when selling items, figured I needed stone to get a furnace and craft a flink's fur coat, blew up my house again because there was stone under it and got my armor. The summon limit for tamed NPCs is double your minion slots, and with it being raised to 4, I felt confident in taking down the queen bee. Upon reaching the jungle, and stepping on a shimmer trap from my cave mod, I started clearing up a nice arena, and capturing everything I could, especially hornets which seemed like a quick and easy way to deal with the boss.
I got an error while summoning hornets, which did not appear to break the game further. This fight went awfully wrong. I ran out of hornets to summon and eventually died to a bee. I'm gonna blame the error though, as it clearly distracted me. It was a stupid simple one too. After summoning a capture, I forgot to move the index telling the game which NPC is being selected in my stash. So after summoning the one at the end of the list, the index is pointing at nothing and the game gets confused. After fixing it, I went back to the jungle. You may have noticed by now that piranhas and man-eaters cannot be captured, and in the case of these two, it wouldn't make much sense to change it, as they wouldn't really be able to do anything for the player in most circumstances. Piranhas are useless outside of water, and snatchers or man-eaters wouldn't be able to reach most targets. In this version, approximately 60 to 70% of hostile NPCs can be tamed. This obviously does not include any bosses, critters, and town NPCs, although some boss summons can be tamed. I started capturing some hornets again, and found a jungle shrine. Did I say a jungle shrine? Because I clearly meant two, and by two, I mean four, which would have been amazing if they were of any use to me. There was another hive next to my arena, and while blowing it up, I noticed bees were dying from the capture sphere hits. This is another small issue I'd have to fix later. Their max health was lower than the damage dealt by a capture sphere, which I didn't plan for. I fixed it by making targets be captured if a sphere tree is gonna kill them or if they have under 15% health, whichever comes first. I buffed up and summoned the queen bee again. This fight went a lot better, even though I accidentally summoned the blue slime at the beginning, which I tried really hard to get smashed by the boss because it was eating up a slot. Getting more hornets definitely helped with the fight, but I underestimated how much I'd need again and finished the fight with only bees and blue slimes in my stash. That one hero hornet took the matter in hand though, and sacrificed itself to defeat the boss. The fight only gave me enough wax to craft two pieces of the bee armor set, but it didn't matter as all I'm looking for is the bonus minion slot from the helmet so I could summon six captures. I also got a honeycomb from the fight, which was basically free damage so I won't complain. The next goal was the wall of flesh, and I started building an elevator, stumbled upon the main mineshaft from my mod, which got me a few life crystals and kept pushing down. I also got a mushroom ring from my cave mod for some healing, and eventually reached the underworld. The plan was simple, I would build the bridge and capture everything I could until I felt ready to fight the wall. Just like in the ice biome, Local bats proved extremely useful in protecting me and capturing the rest of the wildlife. Lava slimes would without a doubt be kind of lackluster against the wall of flesh, and I'm unsure how well bone serpents would do even if they are super cool. Just like hornets in the jungle, demons as flying projectile casters would certainly be the best option. It is worth noting that imps cannot be captured in this version of the mod because I felt like they would be pretty impractical, but it's something I might change in the future. I removed the honeycomb accessory I got from the Queen Bee fight because bees it summoned were finishing off targets I was trying to capture. I eventually got slain by a voodoo demon, but it doesn't matter much as it doesn't affect my capture stash. So after losing a fight with gravity and finding 3 life crystals that I had somehow missed, I went back to work. I noticed two things, a bug where captures target critters, which I would be fixing a bit later, and that bats when summoned as a flock look insanely cool. That voodoo demon reminded me I couldn't just keep building a bridge forever. At this point, I definitely felt ready to give a try at dealing with the wall of flesh. Worst case scenario, I could just come back and grind for more captures before trying again. I actually had a semblance of strategy going in, and threw my entire stock of hellbats and bone serpents at the hungries trying to get rid of the bulk. The hellbats were very effective, the serpents not so much, probably because the platform was too high and they couldn't reach the boss. This allowed me to start using demons, which as expected dealt a ton of damage to the boss.
With no demons left, I resorted to lava slimes, hoping that summoning them in front of the boss multiple times would be enough to deal with it. Even though the mod is pretty unbalanced, it is a ton of fun to play with, and I can't wait for you to try it. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Please consider subscribing if you want to help me out, I would greatly appreciate it. I would like to release a second video covering the hard mode half of the game and bringing some more changes to the mod. It will be released on the Steam Workshop when that happens. I will be publishing videos a bit less often now, likely every two weeks, because I can't keep making a mod I find interesting and a video on it every week. It's too much for me right now. This will allow me to make higher quality mods and videos, with more content and duration respectively too. This one is a good example. Thank you again for staying until the end. I hope you will like that slower pace in exchange for better content.